Hi, I'm Captain Sam Hare, Signer Director of Music in the Royal Marines, and today I've got the great pleasure of speaking to Sergeant Paul Saggers, who's written a major new work for the collaboration between the National Youth Brass Band of Great Britain and the Royal Marines Band Service. So, uh, Paul, what's your piece called? So, my piece is called In, Man in Many Lands, and it tells the story of the life of Mary Seacole. Uh, she was born in 1805, and she was a British Jamaican. Uh, in her early years, she spent a lot of time around the Caribbean um, as a nurse and she was really interested at a young age of just experimenting with um, different sorts of medicines and that made her become really prominent over there as like um, someone who was quite a pioneer in medicine and during um, her early years as I said she was out in the Caribbean she cured a lot of people for cholera uh, which was um, a new disease at that time mm -hmm. Um, and she really, really helped out on that front. And then later on, she moved uh, to the United Kingdom. And that was around the time of the Crime Crimean War. Um, she wanted to uh, go out and join as a service personnel, but because of the racial prejudice at the time, um, she wasn't allowed to. So she thought, right, I'm going anyway. Uh, so she, she went to Crimea herself, actually built a hotel out of anything she could find out there and uh, spent the time um, looking after injured service personnel from both from both sides and then she returned to the United Kingdom was still met with racial prejudice um, but she wrote her own biography um, and from this, uh, that being publicized she was then recognized quite widely um, as a really important figure mm. of our history um, and she was then um, sort of recognised and, and was celebrated. Yeah. So it did end well for her in the end. Good. And I mean, it's an inspirational story, but I, I think when we were <clears throat> initially talking about this commission, <clears throat> excuse me, when we were initially talking about this commission, um, we were trying to find a, a figure that really fit with the theme of celebration. It's the National Youth Brass Band's 70th year, isn't it? Uh, and we're we're also celebrating uh, diversity in all its forms and um, we're just talking through a few figures but Mary Seacole really stood out as, as this inspirational figure didn't she and, mm. and uh, so what have you taken from the story into your piece? So I try to um, take elements of the fact she was quite experimental uh, okay, yeah. so at the beginning it sounds uh, sort of quite trippy in a way uh, that's the only way to, to describe it and then um, so that that's the early years of her career and then her then going out to um, a war zone mm. and then I tried to depict that darker element within mm. the music but then also the celebration of the fact that of all the wonderful work she did so it was, it was particularly pertinent as well, wasn't it? Because, of course, in the Royal Marines Band Service, when we deploy it, it's as part of the medical group as yeah. well. So it had a real resonance for yeah, us as a, as a yeah, story. Yeah, really hit it? home as what, what we do with our career. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be premiered uh, at the National Youth Brass Band's Easter course and then in a joint concert with uh, the Royal Marines Band Collingwood. Um, it's, it's a major work. How long is it? It's about 14, 15 minutes long. Fantastic. Can you talk us through your compositional process, I think, because what people probably won't realise is uh, in the Royal Marines Band Service, you know, we're rehearsing about Battle Festival of Music behind us, and lots of that is composed by band service composers. Mm. Now, this is, you know, a real major new work for brass bands. So mm. could you talk us into how you start your process? So I'd, I'd say it varies from piece to piece, um, depending on, on the sort of the nature. Uh, but with this, it's very programmatic. So mm. I try to build that arc of the story um, and then develop certain ideas, use them in different ways to put, portray the story that I want to tell. Um, so you've got that cohesiveness throughout, um, but also experimenting with sort of different colors, mm. supposedly, um, to, to bring the story to life. And with the colours, were you thinking of the scale? Because the National Youth Brass Band is larger than a, a standard brass band. Were you thinking in, in terms of the scale of the ensemble as well? Have you used that? I wouldn't say I did. I, I tried to approach it from sort of a traditional mm. brass band um, 
sort of look at it just so the piece has some longevity I guess yeah um, and I know the National Youth Band that they're absolutely brilliant I mean I've heard them perform before and even though the scale is much bigger they still get that range um, and that different colour that you would yeah. expect even from a, a normal size band yeah an incredible standard of player as well I mean mm. the, the standard of musicianship within the band is, is extraordinary so have you got any features in there are there any particular characters assigned to instruments or anything um, there's a few little tricky cornet solos. I know the principal <laughs> cornet player. Um, well, I I believe that person is auditioning for the seat at the moment. So, but I had I've got an inkling. So I've I've written some tricky little cornet parts, and there's a, a massive euphonium solo as well. Um, I know that generally the top players that they they are championship standard mm. players, and that they would they would be um, they'd eat this up. I'm sure. Fantastic. And it is part of the concert is part of the uh, European Brass Band Championships, and of course you've got a bit of history there as well. Um, so what, could you tell me about your history with the Europeans? So in 2019, I was shortlisted for the European uh, Brass Band Association Composition Competition. Um, uh, I'm not sure how many people entered it. I believe it was over 30, but I was um, shortlisted down to the final three. So because of that, I then was um, flown out to uh, Switzerland, to Montreux. Nice. Um, and my work, Iron Bright, which told another programmatic piece, which told the story of Brunel, um, came second. And I was beaten by my fellow Cornishman friend, uh, Dan Hall, who's also a brilliant composer. So check him out if you're interested. <laughs> maybe we should get him some, to write something for the band service one day. Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but... Um, you you compose obviously it's a passion of yours um, to to compose works and you you commissioned and things like this and uh, uh, great opportunities for that. Um, have you done your is it a masters in the band service as well? That's correct. So I've basically all of my composition um, has uh, the the band service have been paramount uh, because it, it was from the initial BMUS that we offer mm -hmm. that actually sparked my interest. Um, and that that really it really caught grip with me and then from from doing that it, it as I said it sparked a massive interest and then the MMUS came along uh, and I, folk, I you can choose performance conducting or composing so I went down the composing route and I've now completed my MMUS through the band service fantastic at minimal cost <coughs> <laughs> fantastic so <clears throat> hopefully this piece will go into the uh, brass band repertoire, the brass band canon. Is there anything uh, for you know a conductor like myself that you'd uh, say just insights into understanding your piece of music and and what to bring out from it? I would say, I I like to have quite a um, sort of uh, fluid relationship with a conductor. If if I was to be, um, I I'd, I'd like to take suggestions both ways. Um, yeah. I know some composers are very strict. They. Uh, <laughs> uh, but but myself, I'm 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 not so. My, all I would say is just really sort of take grasp of um, the story that's trying to be told. Uh, so in, in this instant, Mary Seacole's story, mm. um, and then find your own ways to, I guess, bring that to life. In I I feel that when you listen to music, it triggers different things for different people. Mm. Um, so I personally, I would want someone to find those things in themselves that make make the story speak brilliant and of course for a test piece that's that's ideal isn't it if, if each different compo uh, conductor can bring something different into a piece Definitely. That's, that's it's really exciting that because you you then actually as a composer it's really rewarding to hear things that you don't expect to hear brilliant. and you're like oh wow why, why didn't i think of slightly changing that dynamic a yeah. little bit more or it, it is actually quite quite fascinating to see all those different interpretations of music. Fantastic. Well, Paul, I know that um, you're going to rehearse your solo for the Royal Albert Hall in a few minutes, so uh, I'll let you get back to that. But thanks so much for your piece and thanks for your time. Cheers, sir. Thanks very much to Paul Saggers for talking about his new work in many lands. It'll be performed by the National Youth Brass Band of Great Britain in Birmingham Town Hall in concert with the Band of Her Majesty's Royal Marines Collingwood on the 28th of April at 7.30. We'll see you there.